everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to do part 3 on my DSLR cooling modification. Now as you remember, parts 1 and 2, if you haven't seen them, uh, the links at the top, okay, please click on those links and please watch those parts because I highlight on making this uh, cool Peltier cooling system for a Canon 600D. Now so far there are a lot of images with this set up and again I've been getting some fantastic performance from it. Especially with the deep sky objects I've been achieving some amazing amount of detail. And the cooling element for the DSLR has helped dramatically improve the quality of the images cooling that sensor down to a manageable level to try and minimize noise. Now as you're aware that noise is a big problem for DSLR cameras especially when you're taking long exposures you're going to get an interference when the electronics are heating up inside the sensor and you're going to get these hot pixels in the images. Now for the past few months I've been getting some awesome images and as you can see if we take a look, close look on those images Those images were taken from this camera and it just shows you how much improvement this has gained on minimizing the noise. Now bear in mind you're always going to have to take darks no matter what but the cooling will help to take the darks you combine the darks with your subframes and when you stack them together in Deep Sky Stacker or any stacking software, it will counteract with the subs, subframes and cancel out all the hot pixels in the images. What that doing is, is as you create more subs and more dark frames, you're making your images a lot less noisy, a lot less pixelated. All right? It's very crucial that you take darks all right, with, your, with your subframes. Now what we're going to do is, again, we're in June and it is the hottest period of the month so far recorded. It is around about 25 degrees, right, out here, up in Scotland. Okay, down south you're probably around about 28, 29 degrees. So this gives me an opportunity to actually test out this DSLR cooling mod 
and check out how it performs in this heat okay now the reason why I'm doing this today is to push the limits of this cooling device and see what I get from it now I've done a few alterations to help improve the cooling a little bit all right but I'm hoping that it will perform now so far I've been getting some really good results during winter all right and its performance has been quite outstanding again I've been achieving around about 11 degrees cooler uh, than the ambient temperature and I'm just going to I'm just curious on how it performs in the summer now this is extreme during the during the night uh, this will be a lot cooler okay so the, the temperature will drop to about 10 degrees but I'm just going to demonstrate to you guys and girls how this cooling mode performs so what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look on the camera and show you the further improvements I've done everything on the camera itself with the cooling modification still remains the same the one thing I have done is as well as having the sensor the sensors built in inside uh, a dummy battery now what we do is um, if we take a closer look here you might not be able to see that but as you can see here there is a copper secondary plate that I've installed and the reason why I've done this is to increase the cooling efficiency okay so this is all all connected up there's actually two pieces there if we remove that uh, allen bolt at the bottom you can take a closer look on what I've done so far so once we remove the bolt okay that's the bolt removed we can begin to take this apart but it will come out because it's all mated to one side so there you have it there's there's your plate okay your cooling mod uh, you see uh, the wire here which is the temperature sensor now give me a good reading of the actual camera body uh, as I've been using the the, uh, the modification uh, I purchased uh, Simon Fletcher's and uh, this is basically a dummy battery okay so basically this gives me an external power okay and the lead uh, is soldered right up to the top uh, to give me the the external power now if you're interested in purchasing one of these uh, if you check out the description below you'll be able to purchase online and order these cool DSLR uh, PSU modifications now because this dummy battery uh, it's a, it's just an empty it's just an empty battery right there's nothing in there okay and what this has enabled me to do build the sensor uh, the actual temperature sensor inside the dummy battery put it inside okay clip it inside there's a little recess here where I can just flatten it okay flatten the cables all right and then I can just shut the container like so and now it gives me my sensor because of that CSU battery being a dummy battery it is safe for me to uh, drill the hole through there put my sensor in there and then that will give me a much more accurate reading okay it's not perfect but it will give me a, a good reading inside the camera temperature body okay you don't want the sensor to be outside the body because you're not going to get an, an accurate result and the good thing is I don't need to strip out the electrics or start drilling uh, holes into the camera and, and etc so I don't want to do things like that but again if you're interested in ordering a DSLR modification uh, the, the PSU modification just order just check out the description below and you can just order online uh, and contact Simon Fletcher and they'll give you a good price on these so as you can see nothing much on the actual modification has changed but the only difference I have changed is this now as you can see here this is a one millimeter thick copper plate and all I've done is as you can see here on the camera itself this actually clips 
on the bottom piece okay and it enables me to connect both pieces together and clamp it down okay it's it's mated all the way around so it fits perfectly okay and this secondary plate will give me better cooling all around the body and it is quite tricky to make to be honest with you all right and to achieve this this uh, unique shape all right does take a bit of time because as I'm measuring the, the camera body I'm drawing the lines and all that uh, I find one easy process to make this so it fits properly is to make yourself so here is a, a piece of cardboard that I purposely just draw around the, uh, the camera body itself like so so you place it flat you draw around the necessary parts and then you just start to and it does take a while but once you start cutting bits out okay bit by bit okay start uh, drawing up certain parts of the camera you can start to achieve a basic shape like this now I can't provide any sort of uh, sizes and specifications because every camera body is different so I just basically draw around the bottom uh, start cutting parts of the template uh, I have to like reposition it and if it's not quite right I'll just recut or redraw certain parts of this template on your on your on your on your jig once you've got a basic rough shape I then began to start cutting more bits okay uh, you do a lot of cutting all right so you just to get it so it, so it mates inside like so all right once you start getting a rough shape once you've got it there and you and you're happy then what I do is with with the copper plate again uh, the the description below if you want to order this plate okay it's uh, you can order it down below check the the, uh, the the link in the description box so what I do is with a copper plate is I begin to draw around so I place this uh, so, I, so I place uh, the cardboard on top of the copper plate okay like so and then what you do is once you place a copper plate and the jig you just draw all the way around to give you a rough shape onto onto the uh, copper plate so once you've done you can then start cutting start filing and, and start bending now I can't describe it as you're making it because here you've got to do a lot of measuring up checking the sizes uh, start bending the parts of the aluminium to get what you want as you can see it's very complex but what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure uh, that you're bending the plate so it mates into the camera okay as close as possible okay so once it mates in there it should be like a factory fit as if it's fit fits in there with no gaps okay and it does take a while to make all right so you're gonna have to cut parts of the plate uh, to get uh, the actual shape you want okay so I can't really uh, describe the sizes as such but again this is just a secondary plate and then what I did is I ordered some of this neoprene foam sheet okay again descriptions and below all right you can order this online and I basically just cut around and what I did is I left a gap here okay and with this gap is to enable me this to have one-to-one uh, -one contact okay actually on the bottom so I've got metal metal contact so that all the the cold heat can transfer towards this plate now also what you've noticed is there is looks like some kind of adhesive pad now this is a heat sink thermal pad and you can order these from this company here okay and with that you can you get a pack of five with that okay and what it does it with these thermal pads it helps to speed up uh, and give out good uh, transference of the, uh, the the heat okay the cold heat that you need 
across the plate quicker so and that's what you want um, time after time if you're stripping it apart and you're cleaning the, the actual plates themselves alright from time to time uh, you will need to replace the pad okay so again this looks like the pads getting a bit worn okay so what I'll do is I'll just peel off that thermal pad and then reapply a new one okay. now for the maintenance it's quite simple so time after time as well as uh, replacing the thermal pad you do have to occasionally clean out uh, the copper plates okay in between and the copper plate here again uh, with the cooling being so effective it will turn the camera body to ice now don't worry about that the, the actual camera body protects against the moisture and the ice all right so don't worry if you're concerned about electrics getting damaged now as you can see here um, time after time you will get ice forming on the plates okay as you can see it starts to tarnish or corrode uh, the the copper plate however uh, to keep uh, maintain its performance its cooling performance metal polish okay and I just buffer uh, the plates polish the plates just to remove uh, all the uh, the corrosion make make sure that they're clean okay so that's what I'm trying to do so, so if you do get corrosion it will reduce the performance the cooling performance of your modification so every three maybe six months just occasionally use a bit of metal polish and just to polish this up clean it up okay so all your contacts are clean once they're clean all right they'll it'll just maintain that uh, cooling efficiency just that little bit more so you will have to do that occasionally once you've made your plate and you've got everything assembled you've got your thermal pads and all that and your foam installed okay it's quite simple uh, it can be a bit tricky but once you've got it uh, made you just line up the second plate like so line up against the hole okay and then you just replace uh, the back plate of the DSLR cooling modification okay it is a bit tricky uh, to fit it in you just got to slot it in like so and then what you do is replace the one quarter bolts like so screw in the bolt like so okay so that's the modification installed and again it's a good fixture even though it's just one bolt okay but that's now secured so you got the secondary plate and your back plate of your DSLR cooling mod it's all fully installed okay and it's all ready to go that's all you need to do now another top tip is you'll be wondering one thing I've noticed about this camera is if I'm taking any dark frames or I'm taking light frames you see the viewfinder sometimes you will get a bit of stray light from the shutter where the light could enter through the viewfinder because there's a reflex mirror inside the camera you may get internal reflections so one thing I did notice is if you check out uh, your standard Canon strap okay on the ends here you get this part here and uh, what I found is if you take this this part here this rubber part from your strap I've noticed that this acts like a, a viewfinder cover so basically you can uh, fit this over the viewfinder like so okay so it slots in there it goes one way and what that does it blocks out the viewfinder so what that, what so what that does now that will that will prevent any stray light from entering uh, the camera so when you're taking subframes or dark frames you're not going to get any stray light so i found that a very handy feature i didn't know what that was so again that's another great tip to uh, think about so 
once you finish using your camera all right for imaging you will get uh, moisture you will get ice formed around the body around the plate okay now because where this modification is designed this is watertight i'm not gonna risk getting water inside the electrical box okay i made it in such a certain way it's, it's a sealed unit okay so everything's all sealed and i don't need to worry about uh, getting water into the modification you will get ice around the plate you will get ice around the body and again once you take it inside uh, into your into a warm room uh, the ice will just turn into water and you can see it being soaked all the way around but I've had this camera for six seven months now and there is a certain procedure that I always carry out first and what that is is as soon as I bring this camera inside first thing I would do is switch off all the electrics okay switch it off I would dry it out with a dry cloth first so I just dry it out first like so again I make sure that my tea range or my dust covers are in place okay making sure that no water will get inside the camera all right so I make sure everything's all sealed up all right so I don't need to risk any getting any water into the sensor and then what I do is get yourself get yourself one of these a lunch box all right with a sealable lid okay all right got a sealable lid inside like that and then what i do is i put a bit of kitchen roll at the bottom all right bit bit of absorbent kitchen roll okay and then what i do i've got a little container uh, inside here there's some desiccant beads now if you check uh, the description below uh, you can order these uh, from barter okay these are desiccant beads and what they do is they like orange they, they're like orange beads and they turn green uh, once they are fully depleted and what these desiccant beads do is they will draw out all the moisture okay so what you're going to place this in the corner like so and with your camera being dried okay now you will get some moisture on the camera okay and what you do is you place it at the bottom with the kitchen roll okay lay it flat and then you place your desk inside there and then you just seal it up okay and just leave it okay place it place it somewhere else and leave it overnight for about 12 hours or 24 hours and what that does is the desiccant inside here will draw every bit of moisture from the camera and the cooling modification. And then, ever since I've been using this system, I've not, I've not had any problems whatsoever uh, with my camera, okay, malfunctioning. And again, leave it overnight, let it dry out, and once you're ready to use it again uh, the next day, uh, your camera and your cooling modification will be completely dry so it's um, well worth money just getting yourself a sandwich box which you can seal up place the camera with some barred desiccant beads all right and that will draw all the moisture in the electrics and the camera and the cooling mod okay very simple to do all right and ever since i've been using it i've had no problems whatsoever so that's another way to protect your camera so all the people that keep asking me about uh, the moisture and does it damage the camera uh, i've been doing this for a long time now very effective i've not had any problems whatsoever now also you if you don't have uh, desiccant beads you can also use silica pads okay which you'll probably find in a lot of packaging stuff now these are again you can find you can buy these from a lot of good stationery stores or something like that all right and they they're the, exactly the same the desiccant the silica gel and they're in little pads now you can put a, a few packs of these in at the bottom all right and that will do the same effect but however the only true about these silica gel uh, packs 
is that once they're depleted you can't tell uh, or any indication on whether they've been used up or not so that's the only bad thing about these silica gel packs so again uh, I, I regard them as a one use uh, application so you put, you put a couple of them inside the, 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 the lunch box okay uh, and over 24 hours once it's done you're gonna have to bin these okay so once they've depleted that's it you just get rid of them however the good thing about these silica beads is that when they're fully depleted again when they start to all turn green okay when they turn green right you can put these in the oven okay 150 degrees for half an hour okay put them along a tray or in a on a you know on a little oven tray and just let them just warm beads up for about half an hour okay until they start turning orange once they turn orange that means they uh, are fully recharged and you can use these again and again and again okay so they're very uh, very effective than your silica pads so again both are very effective at drawing out the moisture uh, so again I would invest in the beads myself even though uh, the pads are a lot more uh, a lot more secure so you're not going to get beads everywhere but again they do the same function both are effective all right, and both will do the job so there you go now I've tested the, the camera okay during the winter and I've, if you check the, the pictures that I've done I basically was testing the camera out at different intervals all right and I'm actually quite impressed on what I've achieved so far uh, with the camera so what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look at the images So, as you can see for the pictures, very impressed with the camera. It has really has performed with this cooling modification. But don't forget, that was in the winter, okay, relatively cold, and the camera excelled fantastic uh, as I want it to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the camera outside, uh, set it up onto my Newtonian reflector, and show you high performance during the day so what we do now is we're going to take a close look from here so check the ambient temperature coming to 24 degrees okay 24 degrees on the ambient temperature now we've got the camera set up and what we're going to do is we're going to set the camera so we're going to set magic lantern we're going to set the exposure and what we're going to do is we're going to set it to okay we set it to 10 minutes exposure okay and then we're going to set it to ISO 1600 and then that'll be the settings so now what we're going to do is we're testing it out 
Now these are dark frames, so I've got the dust cap covered up. Okay, so we're going to take dark frames. So that's the camera set, ready to go. Okay, set a bulb setting. Okay, we have to switch off uh, live view. So we to reduce the noise, we don't want to put live view. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to take a shot. And what will happen now is it will now begin to take a dark frame now. Okay, and let that just tick over. Don't forget there's no cooling now. So now we're coming up to 10 minutes and the cooling switch still switched off. Okay, we'll be able to see the dark frame and see how good it is. Now as you can see, loads of noise there. So now what we're gonna do, we're just taking our 10 sec uh, our 10 minute exposure and the ambient tire ambient temperature is still 24 degrees so now we're going to switch on the cooling on the power okay we're going to set our cooling to the maximum Okay, 50 degrees, okay, is it 22.1? So that's the main camera body. Okay, so now we're gonna take 10 minutes expo 10 minutes exposure. We're gonna wait till 30 minutes. Right. See if that when the cooling height how the cooling will progress. Okay, and then we'll take a dark frame from there after 30 minutes of cooling so wait 30 minutes to it lowers the temperature down and see what dark frame we will get from that so the time is 15.27 and we're going to begin our cooling right then it is now half an hour past it is 16.03 and we're going to check on the camera now, as you can see, the sun is blurring out, we've got the fan still going, okay, check the temperature, it's around about 15.9, so it has cooled it, but as you can see, there is some condensation on the metal plate, but don't worry, that is normal, alright, that because of the, the way the cooler is designed for, it's not going to pour all over in the inside the electronics, okay? The camera body does actually protect it from the moisture. So you will get some condensation there, okay? That's completely normal. So around about 16 degrees, it's already cooled it. The ambient, the ambient temperature is, it's actually risen, it's actually risen to 28 degrees so yeah that's actually a, a marked improvement on the camera body 16 degrees so what we're going to do is we're going to take another 10 minute dark shot so what, so what we're going to do we're going to switch on the camera set it as we are hold the shutter Okay, and then we'll wait for it to take a 10 minute shot. Okay, and that's now taking a 10 minute exposure or 600 seconds. Okay, it's at 16 degrees. Okay, and the ambient temperature still remains at yeah, 28 degrees. So now we'll take the dark shot of 10 minutes and then we're going to compare the results from a 10 minute exposure with, without cooling and a 10 minute exposure with cooling. And then we're going to compare the results and then see what you think. 
So we so we're coming to the end of the exposure. It is 16:15 and it's taking the shot. Okay. It's taking the shot. And it's 18 degrees point 1. As we go down here, the temperature has gone up just around about 25, 26 degrees. And it's taking the 10 minute exposure. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the results between the non-cooled and the cooled and see, we, see how this performs. Now this is really pushing the limits on this cooling. Okay, as you can see there's condensation on the plate. But don't worry about that because where this is designed this is cooling the camera body and it will help to reduce the, the noise level. But this is really pushing the extreme because this is during the day, okay, it's not, uh, it will get cooler at, at night so it's going to be better cooling but we'll see now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the results within our dark frames.
So, there you have it. Okay, it's not a massive improvement, but don't forget the DSLR cooling modification has helped and has cooled down the camera. Now, again, it's a bit quite hot now. What do you expect? But at least, but it does prove one thing, it's worked and that's the main thing. So the cooling will be a lot more efficient later on tonight but as the night gets colder it will uh, be a lot better it will be a lot more efficient. It's only small games but it is in peak summer and what can you expect but it does work and, it, and that's what you need. Again if you like watching my videos Please hit the like button, all right? Hit that likes. We're gonna see a lot of likes there. And again, look forward to seeing some more videos uh, coming soon. And again, we're also available for showing me for beginners Facebook group. Again, the description's under below. If you want to join that group, just check out the description box, and it'll take you to the the Facebook group. And again, if you like my videos. Please subscribe onto my channel, okay, and you'll get updated to the latest uh, cool things that's going to be out for astronomy. I'll, I'll do a lot of product reviews, uh, hints and tips, and important advice, particularly for beginners amongst you, okay. Hit the subscribe button, and again, look forward to some new video guides coming soon. Again, thanks again, thanks for watching, and clear skies to you all.